Welcome to our fifth episode of Septic Essentials entitled Operation Good Flush. Contrary to popular belief, septic systems do require maintenance throughout their life cycle to ensure that they continue to function properly for a long period of time. Most people understand that when you perform routine scheduled maintenance on your car, you're doing so with the intentions of getting the most out of your vehicle and ensuring that it will last as long as possible. Additionally, when you drive your vehicle, you know that you shouldn't abuse it. The harder you make it work, the more maintenance you will need to perform. Septic systems are no different. Today we are going to focus on what it takes to properly operate and maintain your septic system. One thing you should know right up front is that all septic systems have a lifespan. Depending on how you use or abuse your septic system, that lifespan may be extended or cut short. We estimate that most septic systems have a lifespan of roughly 15 to 25 years of use. But for demonstration purposes, we're going to say that 20 years is a good average. From here, we're going to look at ways of doing maintenance to add years onto the average septic system's life expectancy. And also talk about some common operational mistakes that will decrease that number. From our previous videos, you know that all newly constructed systems are designed based on the daily wastewater flow from the home. A three-bedroom home would have a daily flow of 500 gallons per day, and the septic system would be designed to handle that flow during its lifetime. But what if you only have two people living in a three-bedroom home? Unless those people are washing an excessive amount of clothing or taking really long showers, it's a pretty safe bet that that septic system's life expectancy will be extended. On the other hand, if you have a large number of people living in a three-bedroom home than was anticipated, then you can expect to shave time off of your septic system's life expectancy. The residents will generate too much wastewater too quickly and the system will not be able to keep up with the disposal requirements. Dripping faucets and running toilets only add to this problem because they can add over 4,000 gallons of water to your septic system in one day. Continuing to challenge the system by putting too much wastewater into it will almost definitely cause the system to fail prematurely. Though this type of failure may be easily corrected by reducing the wastewater generated in the home. Other system failures caused by operational mistakes are more costly to repair. And most have to do with what you put down your drain. In a previous video, we mentioned the problems associated with adding a garbage disposal. But we haven't really touched on the daily use of a septic system. We're not talking about what goes on in your bathroom. Our concern is what happens in your kitchen and laundry rooms. In the kitchen, we focus on washing dishes and cleaning up messes. But what are you flushing down the drain? Many people flush cooking fats and grease directly down their drain, which is the absolute worst thing you can do for the life expectancy of your septic system. Unless you have a grease trap installed before your septic tank, the grease and the fats that are liquidized at warm temperatures solidify inside the septic tank as they cool. They form a fatty grease layer inside the tank that could potentially potentially clog up the tank's filter and escape out into the septic bed. Pouring grease and fats down the drain is even worse if you only have a cesspool. With no septic tank to trap them, the grease and fats collect around the drainage holes and eventually plug the holes, causing the system to fail. To avoid this situation, we recommend collecting all of your cooled cooking fats in a disposable container that can be sealed and disposed of in your household trash. A similar thing happens in the laundry room with the detergents that you use to wash clothing. Today's detergents contain a number of fillers and additives that make the consumer believe they are using more product to get cleaner clothes. These fillers have the same effect in the septic system as grease. They solidify and add to the fatty layer in the tank. To make the situation worse, many manufacturers provide the consumer with a cap measuring cup that is much long, larger than the recommended detergent dose. When you read the directions on the bottle, you'll find that you're only supposed to use a one-fourth or one-half of the cap per load of laundry. The more of this material you keep out of your system, the longer you can expect your septic system to last. Another concern for what goes down your drain has to do with household chemicals and cleaning agents. In a previous video, we talked about the good bacteria that lives in your septic tank that help to break down the organic waste. Despite living in a septic tank, this bacteria is actually quite delicate. Being exposed to an excessive amount of harsh cleaning chemicals will cause the bacteria population to decrease meaning that you will have a minimum treatment occurring in your septic tank. By no means are we telling you to stop cleaning your home, because the truth is it will take a lot of chemicals to alter the environment inside of the septic tank. But we do want you to be mindful of what you will be flushing down the drain, especially if you use large amounts of ammonia, lye, or bleach. When you make your cleaning supply purchases, 
we just recommend that you use a more septic safe alternative when they are available. Moving outside the home, it is strongly suggested that you avoid covering the septic disposal area with sheds, driveways, and landscaping or pools in order to make your septic system last as long as possible. Landscaping is one of the biggest concerns. Trees, brushes, and shrubs should all be planted at least 10 feet away from your septic discharge line. The problem is that as the trees and shrubs grow, the roots grow deeper looking for a more abundant water supply in the soil. Once they find the water supply, they begin growing hundreds of thin hair-like roots that provide additional surface area needed for the tree to absorb water. Some trees will completely take over your septic system, filling up cesspools, seepage pits, and septic bed laterals so they can no longer hold any additional wastewater. Some trees, like weeping willows, should be planted much further than 10 feet away from the septic systems. Their roots are notorious for growing long distance horizontally to find a water source. As a homeowner, you also need to be cautious of things that you allow to go on top of where your septic system is. For example, having sprinklers for your lawn or children's water toys on top of your septic disposal area may saturate the soil to a point where it can no longer absorb any wastewater. The same goes for rain gutters. When possible, rain gutters should be diverted so they drain away from your septic system. You also need to be cautious of placing above ground pools over or around the septic disposal area. While excess splash is of some concern, there are two other problems that you need to be aware of with above ground pools. First, when above ground pools are filled with water, they are extremely heavy. If they are placed over or near a septic component like a cesspool or a seepage pit, their weight could cause the pit to collapse. Secondly, the water is kept in the pool by a non-porous liner. The same liner prevents wastewater in the ground from evaporating into the air when a pool is placed on top of a septic disposal area. Surface evaporation is important to the system because wastewater can evaporate at the surface. All of the water must be processed through the soil which places additional strain on the system. Homeowners should also be cautious of what vehicles are allowed to drive or park on top of the septic components. When a septic line is installed under a driveway, engineers require a piping to be made of a heavier material or installed deeper in the ground so that it isn't crushed. If this heavier piping isn't used and the line is installed close to the surface, septic lines may be crushed or pinched, which could restrict water flow and potentially create an access point for the tree roots. The big focus with septic system maintenance lies with having your system professionally pumped out. Most people know that they should have it done, but because there's such a long interval of time between each pump out, some people just forget. Others believe that if nothing's backing up or overflowing, everything must be working okay. There are also people who strongly believe that owning a rural home with a septic system means that you don't have utility bills like you would if you had public sewer, and therefore there's no reason to give yourself more hassle. The truth is, the longer you go without pumping your septic system out, the closer you are to the system failing. So what is the appropriate waiting time for getting your system pumped? If you ask five different people, you'll probably get five different responses, and none of them will be wrong. That is because the recommended interval between pumping depends on the components you have in your system and how many people live in your home. Texas A&M came up with a great chart for explaining the pumping interval difference. In New Jersey, a three-bedroom home will be required to have a 1,000-gallon septic tank. As you can see from the chart, a thousand gallon tank with three to four people should be pumped out roughly every three years. If you have a garbage grinder or a bad habit of dumping cooking fat and grease down the drain, you should probably get your system pumped out more frequently. If you have a cesspool, you may want to consider pumping the system more frequently as well. So what does this pumping schedule cost? And how does it compare to a sewer utility bill? Well, it's not free, but it's definitely cheaper than having to replace your entire septic system. In the town where our office is located, the current expense for sewer utility for a single-family home is about $520 per year. Meanwhile, the cost to pump out your septic system runs between $0.20 and $0.30 cents per gallon plus service fees. For a 1,000-gallon tank, the charges will be about $300 to $400 per pump out every three years. Obviously, not spending anything is the most appealing option, but when you're trying to make your system last, 300 to 400 once every three years sounds a lot better than 520 every year. Cesspools and seepage pits will cost more to have pumped because they hold a large volume of water. For example, a 6 by 12 pit will hold approximately 2,500 gallons. If you get them pumped out frequently, you may be able to just focus on getting the top layer of scum pumped from the system. The bottom line is that whether you have a septic system or you're tied into public sewer, there are expenses associated with your home's utility. 
Septic pumping is a standard for helping to extend the life of today's standard systems. Older systems like cesspools and seepage pits can receive treatments to extend their life, such as pressure washing the bricks or block walls to remove grease and slime buildup, or under direction of an engineer, recharging the stone that surrounds the outside of the walls. There are also over-the-counter maintenance items that are sold, but they are generally focusing on clearing roots or increasing the number of bacteria in the septic tank. Special maintenance procedures are often marked down to homeowners as a silver bullet cure for a septic system that's on the verge of failing. Be very cautious of these remedies, as some of them are only temporary fixes that are known to last less than a month, while others are flat-out illegal in New Jersey. If you ever have a question about any services that were recommended to you, feel free to contact our office to discuss. We have no problem guiding you through all the things that make septics essential. We hope you'll join us next time. We will be answering many of the questions that we have received from our previous videos. See you soon.